All right. Hello, everybody out in STEM Nation. Hey, Mr. Hey, Santella hey. here. We have Mr. Tyler. Uh, we're bringing you another episode of Getting to Know. And today we are honored uh, to have the one and only Mrs. Bradford uh, from STEM Lab. So. Hello. All right. Hi, Mrs. Bradford. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Adjusting to life right now. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, so if you're ready, I say let's go ahead and get started. And uh, we have some questions that we're going to ask you to start off that uh, we ask everyone, and uh, just to kind of start to get to know you a little bit better. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Well, we've already said your name about four times, but why don't you go ahead and start with your name and how long you've been at STEM? I am Mrs. Bradford, and oh, that is a tricky question. I did not know I would have to do that thinking. I think I've been at STEM Labs for eight years now, maybe nine. Okay. It's so amazing that um, all the years blend together, so I can't keep track. I, I know. We actually, uh, Miss Robin said that. She said it's uh, time passes fast when you're having fun. Yeah. Um, so not to make you think even more, but how long have you been in education total? Okay, that one is a little bit easier. I started okay. teaching the same month that my niece was born. So I just always have to remember oh. that. Um, so I've been teaching for 16 years, but I've been in education for about 20 years because I always worked in the base program prior to becoming a teacher. Um, and uh, I think I know the answer to this, but where are you originally from? Colorado. Thornton, Colorado. No, Broomfield, Colorado. That's okay. It's close enough. <laughs> um, so go ahead and tell us about your family, including any pets. Well, family is actually the most important thing to me, no matter what. My family always comes first. So I'll start with my um, family that I live with. I have a wonderful and supportive husband. And I have to tell you, through this experience, he has been there for me and I don't know what I would do without him. I know like the first week when we were adjusting, I was working from like seven in the morning to eight at night and he would come home from work and cook dinner and bring me dinner into the office just so he was making sure I was eating and stuff. So definitely could not do it without him. He is amazing. And then I have a two wonderful twin boys. They are both 10, almost 11. Um, next week they turn 11. They are in fifth grade at STEM lab. And again, I, this would be very difficult if they were different. They are very, very good boys. They are motivated to get their work done. Um, they know when to leave mom alone and when to ask mom for help. So it's been definitely interesting becoming their teacher instead of just their mom. You would think because I'm a teacher, they would listen to me a little bit yeah, but they don't yeah. see me as teacher they see me as mom which i like I, I i definitely want mom so um outside of them though it's actually pretty cool my brother lives about five houses down the street from me and oh, wow. so yeah i'm extremely close to my brother and my brother loves my boys so they are excited to be able to hang out with the uncle um and then my mom and dad who actually live with my brother right now as well. So they just live down the road and having grandma and grandpa around has been nice up until now because we don't see them as much. But, yeah. and then I have a sister who lives about five minutes away and she has three kids that I just absolutely love my nieces and nephews. So I have a very, very close family and this has been kind of hard because we don't get to, usually we see each other at least two to three times a week. And so it's been an adjustment of not physically seeing them as much as we normally do. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I have a lot of family that lives very close to where I live. So I, I, I feel you there. Um, Ms. Bradford, why have you decided to make STEM Lab your home? Oh, that is a great question. Um, it's kind of a funny story. Prior to STEM Lab, I was at Cherry Drive Elementary and I swore up and down I would retire at Cherry Drive. It's like, nope, do not tell me to leave. Um, I ended up going on bed rest and I had to miss several months and I came back. And the year I came back, we found out that extended day was not being supported 
as much at Cherry Drive. Not support might not be the right word. We just didn't have the families who needed extended day. So mm -hmm. I was told that that would be my last year of extended day at Cherry Drive, but they thought they would have a different position for me. Come into the year, they didn't have a different position. So I kind of did the speed dating where I went and did like interviewed at five different schools all at once. Um, and I actually knew Mr. Gonsi. Mr. Gonsi used to be the PE teacher over at Cherry Drive. So he right yep. away texted me. I was like, Gina, you have to come to STEM Lab. It's amazing. And of course, I cried and cried and cried. I'm like, no, I can't leave. And my husband again was like, you never know. This is probably a blessing in disguise. Um, it was 100% a blessing in disguise. I just now see the different way of teaching, the different way of thinking. Um, I am definitely in support of what we do at STEM Lab, that it's not this cookie cutter classroom, that it has to be this way or it has to be that way. And I think I've always been a STEM teacher and I just kind of did it over at Cherry Drive and luckily I had a really nice principal. Um, and now knowing here at STEM, I get to do it without being nervous that I just have the freedom to really truly push my students thinking and turn them into lifelong learners. And I truly value being able to teach the kids how to think, not what to think. And I feel like STEM Lab is the place to really foster that for students because if I'm always giving them the answer, it's, they're never going to know how to do the thinking on their own. Right. And I just think STEM Lab and our administration supports that and will let us do what we need to turn these students into lifelong learners. And we have the awesome. best staff ever. True, I mean, I, I, I can't disagree with you on that one. Um, so Ms. Bradford, what is the best part of your job? Oh, the students, 100%, absolutely. Um, I love the staff, I love my teammates. I could not do it without my teammates, but what gets me going every single day are my students. And that's why this has been actually the hardest because yes, I get to still see them like during Zoom meetings and pictures and videos that they send me, but that interaction with them, I miss 100% because just seeing, and one of the reasons why I will probably always see kindergarten, I don't know, is their joy of learning at this age is amazing. And when they finally get something and they're like, oh my gosh, oh, I, I didn't know we were doing that. You know, I remember I was doing a lesson last year and they were playing a game. And one of the kids finally stood up and kind of started jumping up and down. It was one of my, my challenging students. Like, Mrs. Bradford, this game is teaching us how to do addition. I never knew I knew how to do addition, but I know how to do addition. And so just the joy that they get and how excited they are to really start believing in themselves and seeing it, seeing what I see. That's what I love. And then the families as well, you know, we have amazing families at STEM Lab who support us and, you know, we'll do, obviously right now, do whatever we are asking them to do. So we could not do it without the families that we have at STEM Lab as well. So before I hand it over to Mr. Santella to give you some other questions, I just want to know, what is one positive thing that has come out of being in quarantine? It's making me be a better teacher. It's making me be a different type of teacher. It's making me go out of my comfort zone and doing videos that <laughs> not really always that comfortable. So I actually would say that, is that it's pushing me to be a better teacher and pushing me to be outside of my box. Awesome. Mr. Santella, do you want to take up, take over? I will. Um, and I want to say, you know, I appreciate you stepping out of your comfort zone to make videos and, you know, just to even come and hang out with us on uh, a video interview. So I, I, I truly appreciate you pushing your yourself uh, kind of into that uncomfortable area. And I agree, it's going to make you a better teacher and which is kind of hard because you're an amazing teacher already. Um, but it's a, it, 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 I appreciate it. All right, so. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, what is it like having twin boys? Like, have they ever tried to trick you or, you know, anything like that? What's it like having twin boys? 
Um, I'm going to be completely honest. When we found out we were having twins, I cried big time. I went in the fetal position. Um, my mom tried to come over and talk to me that day, and I locked the door because I'm like, uh uh, no way. Um, so it's been a roller coaster of emotions, I have to say. It is, uh, my pregnancy was awful, absolutely awful. And then I had them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is completely worth it. I love it. I have two wonderful boys to love. You know, I was worried, how am I going to share my love between two kids at the same time? And it, I, that's so silly of me to think about right now that I ever even thought that. And then they were here, and then I went home, and I again cried for three months straight, because it's like, one would be crying, and the other one would be crying. And, you know, when my husband went back to work, how am I feeding them at the same time? And I'm not meant to be a mom. This is awful. Why would this happen to me? Um, and then they would go to bed. And the one thing I like tell people that is so amazing about twins, and I don't know if it's just twins in general, general or identical. I have identical twins. They soothe each other. I never had to rock them to sleep. I never had to sing them to sleep. We would put them in their crib and instantly their head would go together and that would calm themselves down and they would go to sleep. And then as they got older and we had to separate them because of movement, um, our doctor had suggested putting their cribs together and they would reach between the railings and hold hands while they would oh my sleep. God. That is awesome. um, so just going through those different types of experiences that I don't think, if you don't have twins, obviously you don't get to see that connection. They, they have twin tops. They tr that is legit. I actually caught them really? and they recorded and they got mad at me because like, no, 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 like they don't want anybody to know about it. Um, so that's interesting. And I, I, my best friend is actually a twin and she hates her brother 100%. And so I guess I'm lucky that my twins love each other and they support each other. Um, when one is upset, the other one will try to figure out how to make the other one calm down. And I'm very lucky. They actually don't fight very much. So, and right now being a sports mom, it's amazing because yeah, I have two kids, but I go to one team. So that is awesome. <laughs> and oh, the connection that they have like on the soccer field, all their coaches are like, how do they know? They just can pass the ball. It, it is unbelievable that I never knew twins truly do have some weird, crazy connection. And yeah. actually in kindergarten, one of my sons slipped on the playground and he sliced open his head. And so I had to go and take him to the emergency room and he wasn't crying. The other one was crying worse because he said he could feel the pain. Oh, it, it, yeah, that's amazing. It, there's, there's so many cool studies about twins. Like just the research around twins is so interesting. So those are, those are cool stories. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you're All welcome. Right. So what is your favorite thing to do as a family? Ooh, before all of this? Yes, yeah, let's, let's, let's do, let's do yeah. this. Let's do yeah. before and let's do now. Um, before all of this, I would say anything sports related. So we would go golfing a lot and I'm not really good golfer. So I would just sit in the car and kind of like watch and woo -hoo. Um, but we would go to Broncos games and Nuggets games and Rockies games, or, you know, they would come watch me play soccer. I would go watch them play soccer. I it just, anything sports related, going to the park and playing baseball would be the number one thing we loved to do. Okay, what about now? Now I would say going on bike rides it is something that they kind of push back on me, which I don't know why, because they're extremely athletic. But to them, it's like, no, I want to be outside kicking the soccer ball, throwing the baseball, throwing the football. And I want them to just get out more. So I just forced them to do bike <laughs> rides. And now they love it. We go on like six to 10 mile bike rides almost every day. And it's just our time to be together and just out that's awesome that's awesome okay so how are you liking your new house we know you just recently moved and it sounds like you know you you live super close to all your family um how are you liking the new house oh i love it i am so thankful i'm in this house during this time because <laughs> <laughs> um, we had 
upgraded and created like an extra bedroom that we could turn into an office. So thank goodness we did that. Um, and just the space, like I, this is kind of a silly fact about our house because my husband is a little kid as well. I love him, love him, love him. So we have our living room is open, wide and open, and we have a railing for stairs. So he found a basketball hoop that we could connect to the railing so they play basketball in my living room right now. Um, so that's actually helped because especially on the days where they couldn't go outside, they were able to go play basketball. We now have a big basement that we've turned into uh, baseball practice, basketball practice, soccer practice. Um, so like their baseball coach is asking them to do like a lot of swinging and at my old house, there's no way I could have done it. So. I love it. I'm so glad we got to move before all of this happened. Well, and I can relate to you. So my family, we moved uh, last May and we went from a house with no basement where it was three bedrooms and that was it. And we moved into a house very similar. We have an extra room, which I'm in right now. We have a basement and we talk a lot about like, if we had done this, if we were in that old house during this quarantine, like we don't know if we would have survived. So um, yeah. I can definitely relate to that part. So. Yeah. All right. So um, you're a kindergarten teacher. So obviously you have superpowers. Um, <laughs> you can walk on water. You can walk your mind. Um, what is it about being a kindergarten teacher that is, you said that's probably where you're going to end your career. What is it about kindergarten? Because uh, I mean, we're not worthy. Like I would teach any grade. I would teach any grade except. So what is it about kindergarten that keeps you coming back? Um, so I have to say, I feel the same way about middle school. I don't have no <laughs> thank you. Like, they are superheroes. Um, I, again, I think it's just the excitement that these kids have. And they're extremely needy, which I love. I love that they still like me. I love that they still want my help or they need my help at certain points. But I also love how amazing these kids are. You know, no matter what challenge I put in front of them, every single one of my students will uh, like will step up and they'll do it. And they don't really question me and they don't, they just trust me that I'm doing what's best for them. And I love that. And I do love their imagination and I love their questioning the world at this age because they're not quite sure and so I get to be the one to help guide them through their first year of you know yes a lot of them have been to preschool but this is their legit like first year of elementary school and I get to be the one to kind of start it off and help them believe in themselves because it does need to start in kindergarten that they need to feel good about themselves and know that they are amazing and that they are special and every single teacher following will believe that, but you have to believe it. And I get to be the first person to teach them that. Well, I can't tell you how much that warms my heart to hear you say that because you're laying the foundation for their academic career for the next 13 years of their life. You're laying that foundation. So for you to, to understand that that is so important is it just speaks to the kind of teacher you are. So uh, thank you again for that. You're right. welcome. I, I do have to tell you something, the one reason too. I was at King Super's like way before all of this happened and this kid was bagging my groceries and me being the busy mom. I'm like, okay, what, where's the soccer game at today? Where do I have to go? And finally he goes, Miss Brigo, which is my maiden name. And so I look up, he's like, do you remember me? And right away, I knew exactly who it was. He was a he had a harder time in kindergarten and I don't think his parents or himself ever realized the challenges he was going to face. And um, luckily I did have a really good support staff. I had a great administrator and we worked to, and the parents were amazing. We worked together to really make his first year of school successful. And so to me, I'm like, this is why I do it. I do it to help these kids set, set themselves up for success, no matter where you are when you come to me, I will do whatever I can to help you. So he continued, you know, we talked for a while and he finally goes, you know, Miss, Miss Brigham, I just want to thank you for believing in me and teaching me that I needed to believe in myself 
because I didn't think I was going to ever be a good student, but because of you, I was able to get through all of my school. And it's just like, that is why I do what I do right there. Well, you can't see it, but I got a little teary eyed when you were telling that story. So I'm glad I have on the proper attire for this. All right. Oh, I bawled all the way from that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If you don't know me very well, I cry over everything. Oh, okay, and yeah, good. it took me everything not to cry in front of him and wait till I got in the car. <laughs> well, that's amazing. All right. Thank all right. you. I have one more question for you and then I'll hand it off to Tyler. Um, so you've been teaching a while, um, but what are some of the funniest things that kindergartners have said to you over the years? Um, I think the writing that they do is hilarious. I've taken several pictures just to keep for myself. And sometimes I'll send it to their parents to be like, wow, what are you teaching your child at home? Um, <laughs> very interesting. But I think one of the funniest stories or I guess one of the funniest I can remember, because unfortunately as I'm getting older, my memory isn't there, is this year with one of my students, he was having a rough day, and so he left and did whatever, and then he came back and he had drawn a, drawn a picture for me. And so I don't know if this is, it just warms my heart how about, but it is kind of funny. He drew three different pictures, and he's like, Mrs. Bradford, I just love you so much. Here's you as a hot dog. And he literally drew me inside two hot dog buns. And he's like, and I love you so much, I'm going to eat you. I'm like, I don't know if that means you love me. Then he drew me as a cheeseburger. So you see this person lying flat in between two buns. And again, I love you so much, I'm going to eat you. So, and then the last one was just me. And it just said, here's you loving me or something like that. Uh, that's awesome. So it kind of went from like funny because it's like, he sees me as these different pieces of food, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm going to hand it over to Tyler for the uh, lightning round. All right, thank you. All right, Mrs. Bradford. So I have about nine questions here, and we're just going to go the lightning round. So it's going to be your gut instinct. Just answer quickly. If you take too long, myself or Mr. Santella will buzz you out, okay? Okay. All right, first one. Football or football? Football. Mm, okay. Broncos or Rapids? Rapids. Oof, okay. I know, That's... I'm sorry. That's why I said those shoes. They like, like Rapids, Broncos. I mean, they are like yeah, yeah. right there. It's okay. It's uh -huh. okay. okay. Yep. Uh huh. Finish the sentence. You should always blink. Believe in yourself. You should never blink. Um, say mean things. I don't know. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, your favorite movie is? Oh, um, Dirty Dancing. I don't know why I thought you would say dirty. I thought that earlier when we came up with the question. I just thought oh, she'll say Dirty Dancing or something. All right, yep. the next three are uh, related to the kindergartners. Is it harder to teach a kindergartner to raise their hands or wash their hands? Wash their hands. Is it harder to teach a kindergartner to use a tissue to wipe their nose or clean up their mess? Use a tissue. And then that last one is, is it harder for a kindergartner to stay in line or to sit in the right spot? Stay in line. Okay. And then the last one I have for you is, what was your favorite concert? Oh, dear. I would have to say NSYNC at the Pepsi Center <laughs> back in the oh, day. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Oh, well, yeah. That's I all made for boy the band. I love boy bands. That's okay. That's okay. okay We're all wrong fair sometimes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Ms. Bradford, to go ahead and end this, we just wanted to give you the floor to send a message out to everybody that's gonna that is gonna see this. So, um, what would you like to say to our STEM community? Um, I would like to say I miss everyone. I miss the staff. I miss the students. I miss families. Um, parents, please give your children an extra hug squeeze them tightly, tell them that it's from their teachers because we are missing them so, so much. And just thank you for all of your support. 
and dedication to helping your child be successful. Awesome. Hey, you made it through the interview without crying. I know. Woo! I'm proud of yes! myself. I, I felt it coming, though. So woo -woo, that's a win for me. <laughs> All right. Well, Ms. Bradford, we appreciate you giving us some of your time. We know you are incredibly busy. So uh, again, we want to say thank you and hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Bye, Ms. Bradford. Bye.